All right, so it's my belief, you know, a truly deeply held belief that if you want to really understand something, you have to re-implement it in JavaScript. <laughs> so, so that's why what I want to tell you guys about today is, is the most rewarding open source project I've had a chance to work on since joining the JavaScript community. Um, it's a project called JSDOM. So the tagline of JSDOM is that it's a JavaScript implementation of the DOM for use in Node.js. Now, this, this isn't completely accurate, but it's, and we'll talk more about the details soon, but the basic idea is there, right? We're starting in an environment divorced from the web platform. You know, we, we only have the basics of JavaScript to guide us, objects, functions, arrays, you know, so on. And what we want to do is we want to produce a simulacrum of the many APIs we get in a, that make a web page work, things like a window or a document or XMLHP request or URLs or query selectors. And we want to produce such an accurate emulation, in fact, that we want to be able to run code that was meant originally for the browser inside of our simulation against our implementation, purely in JavaScript. So in essence, what we are doing is re-implementing much of the browser in JavaScript itself. So the original reason for creating JSDOM was for server-side rendering. You could run JavaScript that composes the page out of data and templates and so on against a pure JavaScript environment on your server and then get a bunch of HTML out on the end. You'd then send this down the wire to the browser and run the same JavaScript in the browser against the already rendered DOM. JSDOM's actually found a lot more use than that, and, and we'll talk about that. But for me, at least, it's been largely a learning experience. I got involved with JSDOM a couple of years ago, uh, mainly using it for testing. So I was writing a, a Windows 8 app in, in HTML and JavaScript, and it turns out that due to Microsoft's infinite wisdom, there's no way to run automated unit tests against a Windows 8 environment. So that was kind of weird. So I found this project called JSDOM, where I got to, it provided this, this virtual environment where I could run my unit tests. You know, it, it behaved enough like a Windows 8 DOM that I, I could actually run my tests there. I submitted a few pull requests to make it a bit more accurate, a bit more up to date. Then I submitted a few more, and a few more, and eventually I got hooked. So I've been helping maintain the project ever since, and with the involvement of some 124 other contributors. So what I want to talk about today is, is a few things. I want to show you some examples of JSDOM in action so you can get an idea of exactly what we're capable of with this, with this technology. I want to talk about in some detail what exactly it is that JSDOM implements. I mean, what, what do we mean when we say the DOM? Finally, I want to talk a bit about the future of JSDOM because there's some interesting developments there that are kind of tied into other projects I've been working on, and I think it'd be really enjoyable to kind of just dive in and show you some of the details. So anyway, JSDOM in action. Here's an example of, of perhaps the simplest use of JSDOM, using it just as a web scraper. So you can see how what we do is we load a URL into the JSDOM environment, and alongside that, we also load our own script, jQuery. And once everything's loaded into the environment, we can manipulate the window object and do things like select elements using the jQuery we loaded and count them or manipulate them. Now note this is all taking place purely in Node.js, purely in, in JavaScript. There's no instance of Chrome being loaded in the background. There's no Selenium server running with Java and so on. The process of building up a virtual tree of nodes into a virtual document and a virtual window, it, it's taking place entirely in terms of JavaScript primitives. It's pretty cool, I think. And this goes further. So in this example, it's a bit more complicated. We're using JSDOM to test some code that was meant for the browser. So what we do is we browserify up some code, you know, our entry.js, and what that does is it produces a string of JavaScript, a bundled JS string. But then we go a little bit unconventional. We create, using JSDOM, a virtual window from an index.html page. Then, in that virtual window, we create a script element and insert it into the window and we ins inside the text of the script element, we append the, the bundled JavaScript that we got from Browserify. So once we've done this, the JavaScript will act on the DOM, act on the body, and we want to test if that actually matches the expected output. I use these kind of tests in, in many of the libraries I write. I use it for, for Browserify transforms, for DOM manipulation libraries, for all sorts of things, templating. It's great because I can replace costly out-of-process tools like PhantomJS or Selenium and in, cases, in some cases, you know, we're actually more standards compliant than PhantomJS. Um, finally, here's an example of using JSDOM as in real time as part of a server pipeline. It's kind of to show you kind of the ultimate power that having a virtual DOM gives you. This is a quick and dirty HTTP server in Node, you know, missing error handling and all that, as all the best Node programs do. 
Um, and, and it takes any URL you give it, and it uses JSDOM to flip the images. Uh, what it does is, is it uses the JSDOM canvas implementation, and, and yes, we have a canvas implementation, to, to take the images, image SRC, download the image, put it in a canvas, flip the canvas, convert the canvas to a data URL, put that back in the SRC attribute, and then serialize the document with all those data URLs back out and write those out to standard output. And indeed, if you run this, it works. So, so these are kind of the examples that I wanted to give you to show you some of the more common uses of having an in JavaScript DOM. You know, you can do scraping, you can do testing, and you can do real-time manipulation for really whatever you want. And people have built more complicated tools on top of JS DOM for these purposes. For example, you know, Zombie.js, which takes the idea of JS DOM's in-memory window a step further and gives you an in-memory browser, which means you can do things like submit forms, navigate to links, keep your cookies as you log in through a site and exploit your favorite online games. Um, there's also Facebook's Jest, uh, which uses JS DOM to run your tests in a lightning fast mock DOM environment. And they actually use this in production on Facebook.com, which I think is pretty awesome and pretty flattering. All right, so, that, so that's, that's kind of the power of JS DOM. You get the idea. Now I want to talk to you a bit about what exactly it is that we're implementing when we say you know, JS DOM, a job implementation of the DOM. You might think that, that we just mean, let's take the, the actual DOM standard and implement that. Well, it turns out the actual DOM standard is just a, a single document. It's a living standard hosted at dom.spec.wg.org. Um, it defines only the basics, really. You know, nodes, uh, node trees, events, attributes, mutation observers, and the concept of a document. But for example, it doesn't define the concept of a window. It doesn't define any of the HTML elements that might go in those node trees. So in fact, we can't get away with just translating this spec into code. That won't give us anywhere near what we want. Uh, it turns out that you need a lot more. Uh, you, to get a, a useful document and window object, you need the HTML tree for all the elements. You need a spec for parsing the DOM so that you can turn HTML into you know, HTML strings, into HTML nodes. Uh, you need a spec for serializing the DOM so that when you do inner HTML, it gives you an accurate answer. Uh, you, you need things like XHR and URL parsing if you want to run a modern web app. Um, and, and even though we don't do any actual layout calculations yet uh, in, in, for CSS, we do need some CSS implemented. For example, we need all the CSS selector mechanisms so you can use things like query selector. And we need the CSS object model so that when you inspect the style property, that gives you accurate answers. So when you do jQuery.hide, that you actually read display none on the dot style property. So really, the moral of the story is that JS DOM is just a convenient shorthand for JS DOM, HTML, DOM, series, parse, XHR, CSS selector, CSS DOM. But uh, JS DOM was, a, was much nicer. Um, so anyway, yeah, so, so that would be, like, right, this, this would be the nice ideal version of the world is we, we just piece together these specs and implementations of them and they all kind of layer nicely as they're supposed to. But actually, JS DOM has a bit of a historical baggage. Um, it was coded before the modern DOM in HTML standards existed. And instead, we, we build ourselves up in steps the same way that the, the specs originally did, right? Because this is how the specs originally were released back in 1998. We had the DOM level one, and then the DOM level two, and then more DOM level two, and, and more DOM level two, and eventually we get to DOM level three. And it turns out that actually browsers never implemented most of these standards. Uh, most of them are crazy XML stuff, you know, entities, notations. Others are just very obscure, you know, lots of stuff around how to process document types and turn those into to XML things. Uh, the modern DOM and HTML standards actually codify what browsers do, which is great, and, and that was kind of an innovation when it, when it came out. Um, and, and they put it in a single spec, you know, the living DOM spec, the living HTML spec. And, and there's a note about actually, you know, how a bunch of this stuff is, is obsolete and we should not implement it. Well, JSDOM, you know, didn't really pay attention to this note, unfortunately, and so we have to go back and rip out a bunch of the older stuff and squash our giant layer cake into a single normal DOM implementation. Um, so I just wanted to give you a small taste of the unfortunate truth about how the standards underlying the web platform are a giant historical mess. Uh, but we'll stop there for today. Uh, anyway, we're fixing that. In, in JSDOM 2.0, we've got a, a pull request started. Uh, we're going to squash everything down into a single implementation instead of a layer cake. Um, as part of that, we're getting involved in the web platform test project. Now, this is a really cool project independent of JSDOM. Um, it, it's a cross-vendor effort from all these different browser vendors. It's meant to cover essentially all of the web platform, not just you know, DOM and HTML, but also CSS with layout tests or shadow DOM or, or service worker. It, it's all there. 
Now, web platform test is not a perfect test suite by any means. You know, for example, I went looking for tests for the select element, and I found exactly two. Um, so that was, that was a bit disappointing. Uh, coverage is a bit spotty, let's say. Uh, it, it's generally understaffed, and, and sometimes it's hard to get vendors to contribute their tests. But it's still really cool to think that we have a single test suite. You know, it's not tied to anybody's code base. It's not tied to implementation details. It's just testing the web platform using the web platform. And I'm excited for JSDOM to start participating in it. Hopefully, we can become one of the browser vendors, you know, browser vendors contributing tests back to the web platform tests that end up running in Chrome and Firefox and, and even IE. Um, so, so right now, you know, we're just running a tiny subset of web platform tests, but our policy going forward is that whenever you implement a feature in JSDOM, you need to find the right set of web platform tests, or if you can, contribute back uh, and get those running. Uh, finally, uh, talking about how JSDOM is implemented, I want to give a shout out to all the other projects that make JSDOM possible. You know, we depend on these guys for some of the very hardest parts of the web platform that they implement. You know, they're, they're all maintained by separate people who just out of their own initiative have decided, I really want to write an HTML5 parser. You know, I really want to write an uh, implementation of the CSS object model in pure JavaScript. And, and it's been great because we can just integrate these. And, and I've been consistently impressed with how well they've worked with us to, to create you know, a fully functioning JS DOM and all the products on top of that. You know, for example, we just had a great collaboration with the author of Parse 5 uh, to integrate parsing of the template tag into JS DOM. So you know, getting another feature that we're ahead of PhantomJS and ahead of IE uh, in JS DOM. Um, and then we wanted to make JS DOM browserifiable so it could run in a web worker, because why not? Um, so we talked to the author of CSS Style and got, got his stuff working in a, in a web worker away. Um, so that's been really great, and I, I really want to emphasize that these projects are, are where a lot of the, the fun stuff goes on. All right, so to wrap up, I want to talk about the future of JSDOM, but I'm going to talk in a bit of a roundabout way, and I promise it'll all connect up. So first I want to start out with, with this interesting bug that just came up a week or so ago. You know, the, the, the user who filed it said, in the browser, you can do this. You can do window.document, can query selector all, and pass it an array. Uh, and this doesn't work in JSDOM, and that was a bug report. And I was like, wow, this is weird. I've never heard of anybody passing an array to query selector all, but I guess it does work. Huh. So I went and read the spec, you know, and, and the thing to notice in this horrible spec language is that is query selector all is spec to take a DOM string, which to us mere mortals is just a JavaScript string. Um, but the important thing to realize about the spec is that when it says it takes a DOM string, that doesn't mean it only takes a DOM string. It means it converts whatever you pass to it into a string. So from this perspective, the behavior makes sense, right? Because when you convert any array to a string, it just joins it with commas. So that's why when you pass an array to query selector all, it just joins the selectors with commas, and hey, that actually works. So you know, it turns out this is actually a pretty general problem, and it occurs because JSDOM has been ignoring uh, a large part of the way web specs are written. Um, specs are written in this horrible language called WebIDL, um, which has weird concepts like interfaces and read-only attributes and other things that I think originally were derived from COBOL, but you know, then Java got involved and ended up here. Um, so, but but the, the point is, right, like, despite how horrible this is, it's, it's a machine-readable format for specifying the interfaces. And what browsers do is, given this, they write code generation tools that take WebIDL and they turn it into C++ implementations of all the DOM APIs, all the web platform APIs. And they include all the type conversions and all the other stuff that's machine-readable baked in. So this is the kind of step we're missing from JSDOM, in my opinion, something that takes the machine-readable parts of the spec, the WebIDL, and auto-generates the correct type coercions and stuff like that. In fact, you can go further in some cases. So this is an interesting example. This is the IDL for HTML HR element. Um, it turns out you can generate the entire HTML HR element class from this definition. If you translate this definition with all its weird words into JavaScript speak, it's basically just saying you have a number of getters and setters which reflect the values of the corresponding HTML attribute. So let's actually literally do that. Um, here's a version of HTML HR element translated, you know, generated uh, from that web IDL. What it says is when you call this getter, we should get the attribute for a line and convert it to a string. Same thing when you set. You know, for Boolean attributes, the rules are a bit different, but the idea is there's these very simple, uh, straightforward rules that you end up following. And so just like how browser vendors generate their C++ implementations from web IDL, what I've done here is generated the JavaScript implementation by hand um, from web IDL. Well, so of course, you know, as I said at the beginning, to truly understand something, like how browsers go and implement all of these, these different interfaces, 
uh, you have to re-implement it in JavaScript. So that's pretty much what I've been doing. Um, I built these tools uh, in service of a separate project of mine called HTML as Custom Elements. But um, the basic idea is that they'll take as input WebIDL and they'll spit out classes, JavaScript class definitions, uh, with getters and setters and all that. And so in, in other words, they're an automated version of the translation I did by hand in the last two slides. Um, the first tool here, the class generator itself, will generate the classes, and then it delegates to these other two tools, the, the reflector for attributes in HTML and the type conversions for all the different type conversions involved in WebIDL. Um, some of which are pretty complicated, for example, the token lists and so on. The main takeaway here, though, in general, and, and I'm going to incorporate these tools into JSDOM, is that, you know, in general, we're, we're building tools to make JSDOM even more and more like a browser. And, and me and the rest of the JSDOM team are, are moving ever forward, you know, becoming more like a real browser as we go and learning more about how browsers work as we do. And we'd love for you to join us. Um, that, that's essentially all I have to say. Uh, I'd encourage you to come contribute. We've got a lot of easy bugs that you can pick off, a lot of things that are tagged important or easy. So, you know, pick, choose, choose one. Um, as you do, uh, you'll, you'll learn a lot about how the web platform works. And I think, you know, like me, you'll find it to be a very, very rewarding experience. Thank you. <laughs>